What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. I'm, of course, Eric Lindquist. Hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. Uh, that way you can know when anything is going live here at Odd Shopper. The best spot, the one-stop shop for all of your betting needs, whether it's the projections we have on the page just when you go and sign up, or whether it's going to be just finding and shopping for the best lines available. We have it all for you guys. And we also have a BetMGM promo that's going to be expired on August 1st. So I cannot tell you how important it is. If you have been thinking about getting $200 free, which I hope you've been thinking about getting $200 free, all you do is use promo code LINDY, L-I-N-D-Y, at checkout. Click in the link in the, uh, the video description box below. There's a nice little spot that'll link you right to BetMGM. But use promo code LINDY at checkout. Deposit $10, play $10 on any money line period, and you'll get $200 free put into play. So take advantage of that offer. And of course, we're here to talk leans, lakes, and locks. The leans, it means, hey, I don't know if I've made up my mind on this yet or there's no line available, which we have most of them except for the first two of the night. Uh, we have locks, which are the best thing that I can possibly give you. It's incredible. And the likes, which is the middle of the road between the two, uh, just gets the standard vote of approval. So guys, we're going to get into the picks now. Let's ride. We kick things off in Cincy, and maybe it's just me. But it feels like this Reds team, uh, you just kind of know everybody's going to get traded at the deadline, so they might want to show out. And who can blame them? Because you're auditioning for the Dodgers, for the Yankees, Astros, Brewers, Twins, Braves. Sounds a lot better than being a part of the Reds team right now. Anyways, there's a number of Miami starters that could be taking the mound tomorrow. Fifth, uh, the fifth back-end starter was Max Meyer till he got hurt two, two outs into the game the other night. That was brutal. And it sounds like it'll be Daniel Castano coming in, but there's no line out yet here, but that's what I'm assuming. He's just a super low strikeout dude who's shown next to nothing in his third MLB season. So we'll be on the lookout there. Those strikeouts are more pronounced at the AAA level for him. He's got a 26.4% rate in 34 innings there, but just a 13.2% K rate in 35 innings at the big. So let's just say his stuff isn't translating. The known quantity here for me, well, sort of, it's pretty young, but Graham Ashcraft, Starting for the Reds, he misses no bats with a 15.1% K rate. And I say this time after time when it comes to him, you have to limit the hard contact in a meaningful way if you want to survive in Great American. And he does just that with a 35.4% hard hit rate and a super low average exit velocity of 86.5 miles per hour. Plus, this Marlins lineup continues to be a travesty of epic proportions. So I'm not sure where this line opens, but something tells me the Cincy side will be the chalk. And rightfully so, especially if after Ashcraft can keep inducing ground balls at this elite rate we've seen over his last two outings. He's given up just fly balls, uh, five fly balls compared to 17 on the ground. That's the recipe for success in Cincy and a recipe for me that I'm going to go back to them on the money line with if the number's right. Until then, it gets the auto lean play. That's the direction, though, that I am leaning Cincinnati money line. Another no line spot here, Tampa Bay and Baltimore taking on each other in Baltimore. Feels like this series has been going on forever, but I digress. Uh, no line because Tampa hasn't announced anyone official, but it sounds and it looks like it should be Ryan Yarborough. Uh, that's what it lines up to be. Uh, taking on Jordan Lyles here. He's the official starter here for Baltimore. And back when Tampa was doing that opener thing, followed by Yarborough coming in out of the pen in the second inning, the man showed some things with his absurd sub 30% hard hit rate for three consecutive years and a serviceable expected ERA in the 3.5 to 4.5 range on that run from 2019 to 2021. Now, it's not so pretty. His 13.3% K rate is bottom fourth percentile for pitchers in the league. His 5.22 expected ERA is yikes kind of bad. And his 378 WOBA, exists regardless of, of decent power suppression numbers, which is concerning. In other words, the 30-year-old could in a world of hurt could be in for a world of hurt against the Orioles and their much improved offense at the top of this order, especially as for Lyles. Jordan Lyles on the other side here for Baltimore. He's still a bit of a problem for this O starting pro rotation with his 458 expected slugging and sub 19% K rate. And with a team like the Rays that can stack up tons of decent lefties against a righty, you've got to pay particular attention to the starter splits. And that's where it looks problematic for Lyles. His 4.92 XFIP would actually be an improvement over his 5.98 actual FIP, his 17.7% home run to fly ball ratio against lefties compared to his 6.2% rate versus righties is rather damning as well, especially with no changes to the fences on the right side of Camden Yards where it plays 
with the same amount of power as it did before because the left side is the one that got moved back. So I'm just saying, for me, it's almost impo- impossible to back either starter with confidence here, but I'll lean the Rays way. If just because I expect the O's to be slight favorites at open, if that's not the case, which uh, that'd be crazy if it wasn't, I might readjust my stance, but looks like a stay away game, smells like a stay away game. So it might just be a stay away game, but Tampa Bay money line, simply a lean at the moment. I'm not sure if you guys heard me in the open, but we have four days, four days left of the BetMGM promo. So if you have been thinking about getting $200 free dollars, which why wouldn't you think about getting $200 free dollars? Now is the time. Click at the link in the description box below. Go to BetMGM, use promo code Lindy at checkout. And when you play $10 on any MLB money line, you will get $200 free dollars into your account instantly. It's as simple as that. No, uh, no playthrough. Nothing else that you have to do other than enjoy those two hundred dollars. It's the best deal that we've ever offered with a sports book. Period. I can't imagine it gets any better than that. So before August first, you have to go take advantage of this offer. Again, promo code Lindy. Promise you, it guarantees you a win on the day, no matter what happens tomorrow. Get to it, my friends. Now back to the picks. To Yankee Stadium we go. We've got the Royals. We've got the Yankees, where Brady Singer will take the bump for the Royals against Jamison Tyon of the Pinstripes. And hey, this could be an audition of sorts for Andrew Benintendi, for sure. One of the assumed outfield targets for the Yankees and many other contenders. But facing a righty on the mound in Tyon should be good for him to show out, along with the likes of Pascantino, Melendez, as these lefties have enjoyed a 303 on on-base percentage and a 476 slugging average against one Jamison tie on this season. Still, this is obviously a smash spot for the Yankees lineup against Brady Singer, who will be a welcome sight coming off of their date with Max Scherzer on Wednesday. The Yankees, with their 119 WRC Plus versus righties, the second best mark in baseball, they don't have to deal with a guy striking out well north of 30-plus percent of batters like Scherzer this time around. But Singer does have some decent stuff, with a slider grading out at 55 out of 60 on fan graphs, which helps him tweet 25.5% K rate, which isn't nothing. And with no John Carlos Stanton in the near future for the pinstripes, that is one more big bat that it doesn't feel like he has to deal with. And it doesn't feel like it's accounted for in this minus 200 Yankees number. So yeah, you can probably guess where I'm going with this now. I like the Royals at major plus money. I don't even know if I could say that out loud, but here it's true. I do. If Singer can avoid the disaster barrels of Judge, Carpenter, and company, I think he can do enough to make this game competitive. And if that's the case, I'll take the plus 184 at up odds that I'm being offered to take this shot. Now, don't go nuts. Do not go nuts. We're talking about the best lineup in baseball. We're talking about them as massive favorites, and I get it. But I want a standard play on the Royals side. That's something that I already can see the comment section looking a little bleak tomorrow, but is what it is. I know it's a bad idea somewhat sometimes, but hey, YOLO, you only live once. And I will say the value is there. It grades out as a positive ROI pick for me. So the Kansas City money line, as gross as it sounds, and it surely isn't going to happen more than half the time, Kansas City money line is a like at their current number. Ugh, when I saw pitching in this one, the pitching matchup of the Zacks, if you will, uh, that is Wheeler for the Phillies, Thompson for the Pirates. I said out loud, the Phillies are going to be minus 200 on the road, aren't they? And my wife didn't give me any reaction but you know what minus 200 was the opening number so good job by me uh that will surely get bet up to about minus 215 or so by the time i go to sleep tonight i can promise you that but it's warranted because one wheeler is way better than thompson and two the phillies lineup is way better than the pirates in fact the pirates were the first ones to make a meaningful move in the trade market as sellers shipping off daniel vogelbach to the mets for a bag of potato chips which they probably just gave to Vogelbach as a sign of goodwill. Anyways, we haven't seen, we haven't had a lock. Sorry, we haven't had a lock from me yet today. That's part of me that wants to do it with the Phillies here, but I can't do it against a right-hand starter even. Uh, I want to so bad, but there's not enough meat on this bone. It is such a bad number to be laying here with the Phillies. I want to also kind of think about taking the Pirates on the other side. Maybe I'll reconsider this whole game in the morning, but looking at the numbers on both sides of this, looking at the total, I'm definitely not going to to try to hit it against Zach Wheeler. Everything looks efficient. Seven and a half is a total. The minus one and a half at minus 115 for the Phillies, minus 200 on the money line, and plus 175 isn't enough for me to be getting for the Pirates to do anything here. 
So maybe I sprinkle this one last second, but as it stands right now, I'll just say Philly money line lean. That's as safe as it gets in, in talking about anything from this game, but I really do not like it. It's the middle of the fourth in Toronto here. Well, actually, no. Yeah. Let me update. Oh, St. Louis is up six, one right now. That is beautiful stuff. Uh, maybe our crazy ass plus one and a half St. Louis play from yesterday is going to get across the line. We definitely need it. That's for sure. Uh, yesterday, fun stuff, but we've got Detroit, Tyler Ray Alexander, Yusai Kikuchi uh, would be much needed uh, after Taylor Rogers for sure blew it against this same Tigers team for us. We had that parlay of the day. We had it covered completely. He lost a three two ninth inning lead here to cash both ends of that ticket to cash the parlay. They lost 4-3 to this same Tigers team. And wouldn't you know it, this useless team is playing Toronto. Burn the big payday, but such is life. Let's talk about this game, okay? We'll get back on track. Tyler Alexander, he's a southpaw who misses zero bats, gives up a 464 expected slugging, has decent uh, hard contact numbers, but is just not very good at baseball. Because if you don't miss bats against the Blue Jays, buckle up, it could be a bumpy ride. But the real story of this game, in my opinion, is the return of Yusai Kikuchi, an absolute fraud of a pitcher who, get this, has a negative 0.5 war this season. Do you know how bad you have to be to earn a negative war? Anyways, look it up. He gives up outrageously hard contact, walks almost 14% of batters, and is a southpaw, which means this Tigers lineup won't be as inept. And what I mean by this is they are the league worst at WRC Plus against righties by a wide margin, but against lefties this season, they've kicked it up to a 104 WRC plus somehow, some way. So this sounds disturbing. But for a second straight day, give me the plus one and a half on the road team in Toronto. And can I finally get a lock on the board? I sure cannot. I will not get a lock, uh, a lock on the board here in this one. But I actually like this play, which is surprising enough. Again, it's all about value. And that's what I think you're getting back in Detroit, getting the run and a half here in this spot. At Fenway today, we've got Cleveland uh, visiting the Boston Red Sox. It's Tristan McKenzie taking the mound for them against Cutter Crawford. And the Guardians are slight favorites because McKenzie's the better starting pitcher. McKenzie, he has a bit of a perplexing year. He's far better in terms of run prevention in year three with his 3.11 ERA. But the strikeouts continue to drop precipitously from the 30-ish percent, 30-ish percent he opened his career with to his current 23.9% rate he has in 2022. He's just 24, so it's not a velocity or a wear and tear issue for sure for me. He's never really been that hard of a throw to begin with, topping out with a low 90s fastball. But I will say, I'm a bit surprised to see Crawford, the 23rd ranked prospect for the Red Sox, to be getting this much respect from bookmakers to make this almost a pick -em. He's shown flashes in his 14 big league appearances, so I'm not completely writing him off. He's got, But he's got a 4.50 ERA, a 1.31 whip, and a 3.93 XFIP. Hell, he's even got a 4.23 XFIP at AAA this year. Inferior competition. So I will not be backing this Red Sox squad with him at the helm. And seasonably cooler conditions didn't slow down the bats from either team on Wednesday, but I think McKenzie can navigate himself well enough to be successful without Rafael Devers in this Boston lineup. So it took us a while, but we found a lock at last. Cleveland money, my, money line, y'all. I should be able to say money line, but now it's what I do. Cleveland money line, y'all. Lock it in. We head to the Mariners and the Astros, and Seattle was running so good on the heels of that 14-game win streak before the break. But having to face their divisional rivals for another series within a week is surely not running good now. Still, they bring the better pitcher to the mound in Logan Gilbert to face Jose Urquidy of the Strohs and poor Gilbert. The man just went six strong against this very same opposition last time out, racking up eight punch outs and giving up just two earned. Still, he took the loss, and that's the exact same type of game script a lot of aces can, uh, can expect when facing Houston. But with this weird bench one major starter a night thing the Houston Astros keep doing, Wednesday was Alex Bregman's turn for what it's worth. You just never know who might get a break for them. And so without saying much about Urquidy, because he's just a dude and the Astros are priced appropriately, I will be throwing a lean play on these Mariners. But know that reacting to news is still one of the biggest edges left to try to beat the books. So I will be paying very close attention as something tells me Thursday, maybe Alvarez's day of rest. He's a guy who had been hurt. He played the last three days. I just kind of am reading the tea leaves here. And that's the best left-handed bat in baseball, in my opinion, and many other people's opinions. 
that would make Gilbert's job exponentially easier in this spot. So again, just to lean on Seattle money line as it stands right now, but go ahead and upgrade it. If you get that lineup card, you see no Alvarez. If my hunch is correct, that would become a like pretty instantaneously. So Seattle money line, simply a lean as it stands right now. To Coors we go, where this is a tale of two pitchers, in my opinion. Tyler Anderson of the Dodgers going up against Jose Urania of the Colorado Rockies. And Anderson is one of the most solid pitchers in baseball this season. Yet another pirate starter turned best version of themselves elsewhere. And Jose Urania is perhaps the luckiest pitcher in baseball. Why do I say that? Well, because it's true. Urania survived out of the middle of nowhere this season after years of being the one true gas can in the league. And something doesn't add up. He's got a 3.13 ERA in 32, uh, 31 and two thirds this year, but he's still got a 1.42 whip, a 5.19 expected ERA, and just a 12.5% K rate. Yeah, I'm not buying this early success. Add in that this is Coors Field, and this is a Dodgers offense built to smash in these sort of spots. I'm all about the big blue here. I, I'm sure the public will be too, but I don't care. By taking one and a half here, I can also take the over, maybe get a nice payout here. And I'm not just looking at an all out smash fest from the Dodger side on this one. Chris Bryant and CJ Crone against any lefty with a pulse. There should be hope that they can add to the tally, if only slightly, because Anderson has been solid. So here we go. The lock parlay of the day, LA Dodgers minus one and a half plus the over on 11 and a half runs. That is, of course, assuming they can get this game underway, as I am seeing storms lingering in this area on Thursday. Look at me. I'm a meteorologist out of the middle of nowhere. But as it stands right now, if the weather looks clear, Dodgers minus one and a half with the over of 11 and a half, lock it in, my friends. All right, we're going Rangers and Angels here in Anaheim. And my favorite baseball player in all the land in Shohei Otani takes on these Rangers. And Spencer Howard is going to be the guy on the mound for them. And starting with Howard, he's gotten a lot of discussion on this show. Why? Well, he kind of deserves it. He's the number one prospect in the Texas organization. And it's hard to imagine a world where a dude with four seemingly A-plus pitches doesn't eventually find his footing at the big league level. But that's exactly what we've seen from him all year. He goes down to AAA, and he just roasts dudes with a 30.8% K rate and a 225 average and just a 1.25 whip. But in the show... He's only striking out 17.5% of batters with a 306 average and a 1.78 whip. In other words, what the hell, dude? As for Otani, the dude's just fantastic. I keep saying, dude, I apologize. In every sense of the word, though, he is. He is one hell of a dude. He's got, get this, a 2.41 FIP, which is actually slightly unlucky to his 2.37 X FIP. However, he did show cracks in the armor last time out against the Braves, giving up six runs to Loon, his ERA to 2.8. I mean, come on. It's a joke how good he is. And the Angels' bats woke up for the first time in a long time here the last few games, stealing a game off the Braves on Sunday, then winning their first series in what feels like forever during the week against Kansas City. But laying minus 230 with a troutless Angels team? It's got to be some sort of joke, right? No thanks. I don't care who's on the mound because they still have to score runs. So what do I see here? I just think it's such an auto bet the under game here. It's not even funny. You have seven and a half with a pitcher. I believe in long-term with Howard. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still got faith here. And a pitcher that everybody believes in long-term with Otani. It's an under slam time for me. So lock it in folks. Under seven and a half, that's a lock. All right, last game of the night. We've got the Cubs and the Giants, and it's kind of just an unappealing one to me all the way around. Speaking of the trade deadline, though, no question, these two teams could look a lot different in very short order. Pay attention to the lineups of the Cubbies, of the Giants, of any other team that might be sellers coming up here in the near future because they could be very, very bleak day to day. You want to be reacting to those lineup cards. If something looks wrong, if it smells wrong, you can definitely take advantage of it, but... I have no idea if San Francisco thinks they could be buyers or not. They could be sellers. They're kind of in that middling area where I don't really know what to think of. But we're talking the baseball game here, and it's as simple as this for me. We've been backing Justin Steele and his power suppression for quite some time, and now he goes to the best pitcher's park in the game. It just makes sense that I'm going to continue to play Justin Steele here. And Alex Wood, he still has decent stuff. He's got a 24.3% K rate, a 5.8% walk rate, a 300X Woba. Those are all fantastic numbers. 
But I still think if you're going to get the regular iteration with Contreras, other guys in this Cubs lineup, it's still some time here until the deadline. Uh, They're going to be on the road here for a little while, but you want to pay attention to it. So long as you still get the Contreras, Haps, and and, uh, Suzuki's of the world in that lineup, I still want to be going to their side with the money line, but only a lean as it stands right now. Lots of information that still needs to come out here. Uh, Be paying attention to the lineup cards, but as it stands, definitely uh, a lean here on the Cubbies. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Head to that comment section below. Let me know your picks for today's MLB slate here on Thursday, July 28th. Looking forward to some baseball. And you can look forward to $200 in your account at BetMGM just by signing up using promo code Lindy. Go to the link in the description box below, my friends. I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets tonight.